transforming yourself, is letting go of things that are causing suffering, is allowing yourself permission to move forward if perhaps you've got some little rule in your head that says, well, I'm not that thing. I'm not, you know, a professional, or I'm not smart, or I'm not enough. Well, what if you were enough? What if you could change your self-concept to say, well, I'm not only am I enough, but I'm awesome. Hey guys, Matt Tate here from Fork in the Road, your channel for transformation. Once again, I'm continuing on my book series. This one here, Steve Andreas's Transforming Yourself. Right now, and my, I'm in a park here in Surfer's Paradise, just down the road a bit, and beautiful scene here on the river. And the lighting works best when I don't point the camera towards the river, so that's what I'm doing. I'm not pointing it at the water, but just to show you quickly, there it is there. There's the uh, one of the many rivers that run through the estuaries here um, from the Broadwater. Now, let's jump in to the next activity inside the book, and we're continuing on. This is now moving into building a new quality. 9-1 is the exercise inside the book. Now, very important thing inside building a new quality, we must check that you don't already have a negative database. Now, what does that mean? Negative memories where you've made generalizations about yourself. That's what the self-concept is. It's just one massive generalization about who you think you are. The whole point of this, the whole reason why we're doing this is to help you to shift and transform the qualities in yourself that you would like to have, the qualities in yourself that you would like not to have, and form a better opinion of yourself. Because when you change your identity, the actions come out automatically. That's the whole point of this book, is transforming yourself, is letting go of things that are causing suffering, is allowing yourself permission to move forward if perhaps you've got some little rule in your head that says, well, I'm not that thing. I'm not you know, a professional, or I'm not smart, or I'm not enough. Well, what if you were enough? What if you could change your self-concept to say, well, I'm not only am I enough, but I'm awesome, and it's also based on skill. We're not going to pretend like you're just awesome with no skill. It makes a very um, confident, dumb person. That's not what we want. We want you to be a confident person with skill. But there are things in our self-concept that stop us even starting on that journey. So I thought I'll go through this checklist. It's a new one in the book. Very powerful. Very worthwhile investigating. So this one is building a new quality inside of yourself. Exercise nine, here are the elements and I'll move to the side so I can put it on the screen just over here. And so the first one is content. Like let's figure out what quality you would like to have inside this and you wanna have it as a stable part of your identity. What's a quality you would like? Would you like to be consistent? Consistent where? You might be very consistent at work very consistent with your family, but not consistent with your diet, and not consistent by managing your mental health with lots of negative thoughts, right? That's what a lot of my clients have at the start. That's why they come to me in the coaching practice. And so content, we'll go into the content in a moment, but what is a quality you would like? Okay, let me test this out on myself. I'd like to be consistent in marketing my business because I'm not really needing to be at the moment, but I'd like to know that if I need to turn on the switch, I can. If I need to turn it off because I'm too busy, I can. But I need to that, that consistency in doing these videos for the YouTube channel. There you go, there's a good one. Now, I do believe I'm consistent in other areas of my life, but it feels more reactionary. So let's just do a bit, bit of a check-in. And you might find that there is some resistance coming up in the future in this video. So the first is the content and the stable part. I'm just reading literally from the book right now. What's a stable part? Stable part of your that being consistent that you would like to have. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go into uh, like they talk about an intermediate chunk size. I think um, he uses the example of tenacity, loyalty, loyalty, dependability. In intelligence and I'm using consistency I think that's a reasonable kind of comparison to those words he suggests the second is a congruence check 
Is there, is there any issue here? Do you have any objection to having this consistency? And I think that there's some resistance. If I can build consistency into multiple areas, it's fine. If I build consistency into just one area of my life, I feel resistance. So, I mean, for example, if you had consistency in your business, but no consistency in time with your partner, that's a problem. Or if you had consistency in time with your partner, but no consist consistency in your business, that's a problem. This is the beginning point of addressing the resistance that's inside of you, which is your unconscious mind saying, I know you haven't got this, so I haven't thought this through. <laughs> I know it. That's what it's saying to you. And so we want to make sure we've thought it through. And so is there any resistance? Just tap into that. And you pick one for you. What's your quality you want that you don't currently have and that you would like to have in your database, in your memories, in your opinion of yourself? For me, consistency, I'll make as a generalization. And then I've got to choose and set boundaries to make sure I'm being consistent where it's important for me. So congruency, I think I'm sweet with consistency as long as I pay attention to being consistent in areas that make me happy. Now, the testing, we have to test this out. Number three is testing. So number one was, what is the quality you want? Number two is a congruence check. And number three is testing. Looking down at the book there. Testing, let's test this out. Be very careful you don't already have a database for having this quality. Proceed only when you are sure you don't already have a negative or ambivalent self-concept that would conflict with the positive quality that you would like to have okay so this is building a new quality now there i've got a problem with consistency then because i'm very consistent i always show up when the work's there to be done i always show up right i'm always consistent so it's the context of being consistent in say youtube or consistent in the marketing of my coaching or being consistent i don't know um socializing i'm inconsistent with my socializing like that could be something I could work on as well. Consistent with networking with people. Back to the business slash social, socializing at the same time. What's something that you would like to change in your self-concept? It's great to explore. So for me, I'm going to say, before I be very sure I don't already have a database for having this quality. Now I'm gonna to have to maybe break this down a little bit. Got a boat crew. Oh, got a jet ski just cruising down the river there. Just thought I'd share that with you. There he goes, cruising down the river. <laughs> and so, as I keep on going, and maybe I'll make it so that I am consistent in getting my message out. Big challenge for me is I got a database that says I'm not consistent in getting my 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 message out. So I need something else. Hmm, maybe it is shining a light. Shining a light for people. But I've already got a database where I believe I shine a light for people. Okay, I've got to explore this. Make sure I'm putting in a new quality I would like, but I don't have a negative or I don't have a positive database already inside. Okay, charismatic. There you go. I've never really considered myself as charismatic. But I've probably not... Do I think I'm, I'm charismatic? That's a test. The, test. the way to test this for yourself is to say to yourself, imagine someone coming up to you and saying, you are charismatic. And I'm trying to imagine that now. Someone comes up to me and says, you are charismatic. I've got a reaction of, oh. Oh. I didn't necessarily say, no, I'm a piece of, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible, but I didn't, it's kind of like, oh, I don't even know how to respond to that. So yeah, I'd like to be more charismatic for the camera. That's a pr probably a good one. Let's roll with char charisma. So you've got that energy that comes off you that's attractive. Cool, let's go with that. Let's, that's something I would like. I don't currently have it as an opinion of myself, but I'd like to have more of an opinion to lift my energy, to lift my game. I know how to manipulate myself to uh, feel charismatic, but it's it's not 
internal. It's like I'm man manufacturing it, if you know what I mean. So let's try that. All right, charismatic. Let's see how I've just checked in with that. So be careful because with this exercise, if you have a negative database, this won't work. It'll, you'll, you'll have an internal fight going on, which you don't want. Right, so check in, make sure there's nothing where you go, no, that's not true. It's like, oh, you want that? Oh, I didn't realize, oh, what am I? I'm not sure. Charismatic, maybe, I don't know. You know, that's what you want. You want that I'm not sure kind of reaction. So now there's number three. Number four is a positive template. So elicit the structure I use to represent a strong positive quality that I like. Okay, what's a strong positive quality that I like? Let's go with... I've got caring came up. I'm kind. I'm certainly not nasty. So there you go, there's a bit of a database. I'm, I'm a pretty kind person. And I like that I've got a kindness about me. Um... <laughs> So this is an interesting exercise, isn't it? Now, I mean, I've, I, I don't, for some reason, going blank, but as I go through this thought process, I am a something person. I enjoy public speaking. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. Because I think I'm always gonna get better at public speaking because I know what I don't know. I know there's things I haven't learned, and so maybe there's a judgment going on there. So that's an interesting one. And so there we go, I'm going through this little exercise and so in my positive template, let's go through some of the elements inside the template. So I've got this structure inside of me, let's go through it. This is what's in, in my head from the book so far, having done so many videos. The first one is, okay, um, I love public speaking because of the growth it gives me. And when I close my eyes, I get 200 examples straight away. And they're all kind of spread out in an even formation, all at the same time, all kind of small in front of me as I close my eyes. And so I've got the number, 200. I've got a whole bunch of little images that are pictures, but I can't make out what's in the pictures but they're all there and I can access anyone I want and bring it up and step into it. And it might be when I was in Toastmasters learning public speaking. It might be when I did a public speech, um, I went into a public speech contest. It might have been uh, a time when I, I know I love public speaking because, you know, you got that, you know, you're <laughs> getting a little bit excited and a bit nervous. Um, I've got that memory of going just before going up for a speech in a speech contest. Um, perhaps it might even be when I was teaching in the TAFE sector, which is like junior college in America or that part between high school and university. It's like that, that sort of building bridge. That's where I was teaching. It might have been when I did a public speaking course and we had to deliver the speech on the last, the seventh day of the course. It was NLP public speaking. And so there's lots of different examples and I've got all these examples and I can just grab them, jump into them. Oh, I remember that time. I remember that time. And they're all in front of me. All little images and they're all kind of got like a green glow on them. But they're small and there's many of them, like a field in a formation, in rows with a pattern. That's what my brain's telling me. That's what I'm rolling with, right? And so I've got these images in my structure. They're there at the same time. They're not in order. There's 200 plus of them, maybe more. Many examples that I love public speaking. Doing this YouTube video is another example that will go into my database of my brain as a memory. And so there's my database. And so they're images. When I go into them, I start to get the sounds, the feelings, and the pictures. But from the distance, yeah, and they're all there. Um, and counterexamples, I think, are integrated. There might be other categories off to the side, but generally speaking, this is strong. I'm very happy with it. There's some counterexamples in there where I didn't like public speaking, where I was nervous in a bad way. 
but there's so many good ones that it's a very strong quality inside myself. It's a self internal belief based on history, based on experiences, right? Continuing on now with, uh, if I tune it up, what would I do to tune it up? Well, if I had any resistance in counter examples, I'd move a couple across or recategorize them away. Um, I could look for more examples by themselves. I can also remember the times when other people said that to me and I put myself in their position. I could create symbols, right? Symbols that represent whole clusters of me loving public speaking, right? So this is just the practice part where we put it all together. But I'm feeling very strong about that I love public speaking, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ch tune it up too much more. But if you wanted it to be stronger, Go searching for other times, and I actually am coming up with more and more examples, so it's more like 300 now, where I love public speaking, and because of the growth it gives me, right? Where people come up to me after a speech and said, oh, great speech. And then I can put myself in their position and see what they saw. That was someone who was really putting their heart and soul into what they're doing, as more evidence. And then I can go to the future. I can go to the future and say, all right, I love public speaking and putting myself in situations where I'm stretching, where I'm moving forward, where I'm learning something new and applying it, maybe messing it up a little bit, but that's okay as I internalize the lesson and then learn the skill. Okay, so this is about mixing skill with the effort that goes into it and belief in yourself. Okay, so five is tuned up. Number six is building a new quality. So using the positive template I've just elicited in this model, as a model, find appropriate memories to use as examples in a database of the desired new quality and assemble them into the form of a positive template. When you're done, create a summary representation, summary, summary representation of the quality. Be sure that the new quality has all the tune-up elements we've been working with. Ooh, okay, so charisma uh, was the one I was going for. And so if I'm going for charisma, and I want to be more charismatic in just my everyday interactions with everybody, instead of it being forced, it just comes out of me. Just got this. There he goes, having a good time. <laughs> Never a dull moment on the Gold Coast. And so building that new quality, right, so charisma. Okay, what am I doing with charisma? I need to go and access to start with and put the same pictures in the same kind of orientation. Build 200 examples of when I've been charismatic and maybe I haven't recognized it. Maybe it was when I was teaching at TAFE and I've had feedback from the, student, the, the students that when I was teaching, that they loved the content and that mine was a great class and that they learnt so much from it, right? So I could start to access a couple of really strong examples of that that were powerful, that are representations of that. Where I recognise, yeah, there was a bit of charisma coming out because I was loving what I was doing, right? And now I'm going back to the cricket field and I might have had some charisma when I scored 100 in cricket, I only did, did it two times. And I played cricket and I scored 100, and when I got to about 70 or 80 runs, I had this internal charisma, because I had this thought come to my mind, there is no way these people, these bowlers, this team, are ever gonna get me out. The only person that gets me out today is me. I'm in control of this. I'm playing so well. I've seen off all of their bowlers, and I've, I've just, I've, I own the whole team. They can throw any bowler they like at me. It's up to me as to whether I'm making runs, staying out here longer, because I was in control. There's an example. Now, it's not related to public speaking, charisma, but it was charisma in a sporting sense. What other examples can you bring forward of charisma or whatever your quality was from a different context? It's powerful, isn't it? Because you're deleting or disregarding examples, memories, situations where you were the quality that you've disregarded and you hadn't considered it. 
So go into those memories and just bring them across as a representation of being internally, for me, charismatic. So the cricket field, um, I had times when I was at Toastmasters and people have come up to me and said what a great speech that was. Uh, where I've maybe helped a new member in the club feel welcome. That was perhaps could be seen as charismatic. In the TAFE sector when I was teaching and I was teaching people, that was charismatic because they gave me some incredible feedback. And a range of other situations where I was charismatic. So the idea is I'm taking something I didn't really have an opinion about myself and I'm assembling them in front of me and giving them those little green sort of hue of light that the other database had, similar. And this is me being charismatic and I'm putting them all there and they're all there lining up one by one and there's oh, probably about 50 now. So I need to keep building this. Building this and even tuning it up. Let's have a look at it from a symbol. What's a symbol of me being charismatic? And I've got me shining a light. It's like someone, like a lighthouse. Like I'm the lighthouse shining a light for others. Giving them energy. That feels good. And inside that symbol, there is examples of me being charismatic. I'm at school. There might be 50 now where I've been at school teaching and I've been charismatic. There's probably 20 or 30 on the cricket field where I was charismatic. Toastmasters, public speaking. When I went to the speech contest, I felt charismatic. When I went to the local Toastmasters club meetings, I've got lots of examples there of it feeling charismatic. Even though I didn't think of myself as that, I'm gathering them together. I want to get to that 200 odd mark that I started with the other quality that I had, which is that I love public speaking, right? So I'm trying to get to that same place. That's my target, is that I love public speaking. I, I gave a speech at a funeral. That was a form of charisma in that others were too nervous to do so. Where I held myself well. I'm seeing that as charismatic. Where I was in a meeting when I used to work in an engineering firm and I felt charismatic because I was in the meeting. So there's, I've, I've got 200 now. They're all in front of me. They're green hues of light. There's plenty of them. And now I can boost them up. I've got the representation, the symbol of a lighthouse, meaning I'm shining a light, which is kind of connected to public speaking as well. But I'm feeling more charismatic in my energy inside. So this will be interesting to see how I feel about charisma afterwards, because it wasn't really a thing. And now do I feel charismatic? Without being cocky or overconfident, I, I think, yeah, I think it's all coming through. Let's keep going, let's, let's tune it up. Let's go into the future. And now I'm going to a future public speech. I'm gonna be teaching NLP in the future. And I'm visualizing myself, feeling in the body, the charisma, lifting up my chest, lifting up my head a little bit, charismatic. I'm recognizing people here in Surface Paradise who are charismatic. I see them walking along, and just they, they've got their chest out and their heads up high. You can tell that they're charismatic. And so I'm also presenting myself to the world as charismatic, more naturally, more automatically, more authentically. And it's going to be very handy in public speaking. So I'm picturing myself in the future. I'm creating symbols. I've gathered my information together, my memories of charisma. Um, I'm tuning it up. I've got, what else do we have in the tune up? Um, perceptual positions, any counter examples to being charismatic. That's good because my counter examples are over here, the opposite to charismatic, which is a bit flat. And I think we can categorize them in different places. I can put being flat, meaning, you know, first thing in the morning, I'm looking for my coffee. Um, I put flat also maybe after a big workout. That's probably okay. Um, when have I been flat? Yeah, different times. I, whenever I drive, I tend to feel a bit flat after driving. <laughs> and so we can put them in different categories 
and then just bring across the ones where you were not charismatic and bring them in as lessons. Bring them all, the ones about 5% of the database, shrink them down one by one. I'm shrinking them down because they're kind of big and they might overwhelm the database. And I'm bringing them in as feeling charismatic. That's pretty good. That feels good. So I'm bringing them in and they're just nestling in there as little lessons to know when you're not being charismatic as a warning system to up your game, lift your chest, lift your lift yourself up a little bit, lift your energy, like this video. I'm lifting myself up for the video. I'm feeling more charismatic because I'm gathering my database. So now I'll go into the future, three times into the future is good. I'm going to a public speech. I'm going to teaching online. I'm going to, because I'm teaching online, I'm going to NLP training where I'm the trainer. I'm going to my next one-on-one -on -one client session with charisma. Charismatic. And I'm seeing myself doing that. I'm feeling it. I'm hearing it in my voice. The energy is up. I'm excited. It feels good. I like it. That's cool. It feels good. Um, that charisma is coming through. And so now we're at the end of the exercise. And I'm asking myself, someone comes up to me from the outside. Here's the test. This is step number seven. Let's test it out. Do I feel char uh, charismatic or char charisma? Someone's going to walk up to me and they say to me, man, you've got so much charisma. I don't have any resistance. And I'm hearing a thank you. Thank you. And when you say thank you, it's like, yep, that's right. I got charisma. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I've just done that to myself in my head. Now I'm just reading the book. Imagine what you could do if you had a coach taking you through this. Or imagine what you could do if you did this to yourself. That's amazing. I am now charismatic. Oh my God, that's part of who I am. Um, wow, that's amazing. And the last step, number eight, is a congruence check. Do you have any objection to having this new quality? And again, check carefully to be sure that this new quality fits with all your other qualities and satisfy any objections. So am I happy with this new quality? Yes, I am happy with this new quality. And it's one of those things that in different situations, you could tune it up and tune it down to match the situation, right? So as long as I've got flexibility with it, but am I happy with having a higher baseline with being charismatic? Yep, I'm very happy with that. Considering that I'm embarking on further marketing, I'm embarking, I'm embarking, I'm embarking on becoming more um, out there as a coach, doing more content, doing more videos on YouTube for you guys. Yeah, it feels good. And any other objections? How do I resolve them? Just ask, well, what do you need? Make sure my partner's happy. Make sure my family's happy. Make sure I'm, you know, giving a positive vibe to it. That there's no negative vibe to the charisma, that it's not ego. As long as it's a positive, uplifted energy. Because you can see some people at Surface Paradise and they're like, it's, it's beyond charisma. It goes into ego. So as long as I'm finding that really happy balance of a positive vibe that people want to be part of. So I'm happy with those little distinctions for me. So what is a quality you would like to build inside yourself? Now I had to change mine at the start. I can't even remember what it was now. Uh, but at the start, because it wasn't going to quite, I think it was being consistent, but I already had a database of positive consistency in other areas of my life. So I'll use a different technique inside the self-concept model to bring that one forward. Consistency in marketing was going to clash because I am consistent in, in art and what, some areas and I'm definitely not consistent in others. So different technique. I already had a positive and a negative database. So this particular activity works best when you just don't really have an opinion. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't heard of that before. That's perfect situation to then build that quality if it's going to serve you in the future. So for me, as I'm public speaking, as I'm doing YouTube videos, as I get on stage, teach, I know I need to have some charisma about me to lead the group. It's part of the sort of job description. And 
if I ask myself now, looking at the camera, do I feel internally that I am charismatic? I get a yes. And I could give that a score out of 10, right? 10 out of 10, I'm incredibly charismatic. Zero, I'm not at all. What's the first number I get? Am I charismatic? I'm getting a seven. I'll take a seven because I, I didn't have a score before, right? So I'm um, seven. Charismatic, especially in this moment. Now I've just tweaked it. <laughs> I'm feeling charismatic. Now we can check in with that, see how things have shifted inside later on. I hope you enjoy that little exercise. That's me turning myself into a charismatic speaker <laughs> and believing that I have internal charisma where before I did, without being egotistical, that's my rule, but just exuding a more popular, a positive, a more positive vibration. This is Matthew Tate from Fork in the Road. As always, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you would like to get more of these videos on a regular basis where I explore things like this to shift myself as I try to lift, or at least I do lift, myself to a better place. Full of charisma now, apparently. <laughs> 7 out of 10, I'll take it. Alright guys, talk to you next time. Fork in the Road, Matthew Tate. Hit the subscribe button and you'll get my videos for free on a regular basis.